Hi guys, this is Jason Zach from Nathaniel School of Music. In this tutorial, we are going to brainstorm five ways to train your melodic ear. Now, there is no one way which may work for or should work for everyone, which is why I think these five ways or these five approaches might guide you towards overall improving your melodic ear. Yes, there are some steps involved. You need to first do the basics, right? So I'm not going to cover the basics like finding the scale of the song. You can find that in our detailed members only tutorials where we've, of course, we are allowed to play songs. Uh, we can't play songs on our YouTube channel. Otherwise, it'll take the video down or give the channel some kind of a strike as we know of it. Uh, so for the detailed ideas of how to find the actual scale, the key, the pitch, the melodic curves as I call it, we have our website which can help you uh, or on our YouTube channel in the members only portals, do check that out. However, in this lesson, I'm just going to show you the five strategies, hopefully where they've also emerged from and historically how people like me have also grasped it. So I will tell you what I know. And if you think there are other ways to train your melodic ear, do feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to research it and maybe even make a tutorial on that. So before we get started, there are a lot of learning resources waiting for you on our Patreon page to help fine tune your melodic ear even more if you will. So do consider heading over there and supporting us for just five dollars a month and also it'll be great if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on that bell icon for regular notifications let's get cracking so the first type of melodic ear training which seemed to work for me during my formative years as a musician and even now was the the tape machine approach as i call it or the cassette player approach which i call as pitch freezing so pitch freezing basically means hitting pause on your tape recorder or your spotify player or whatever you're playing your song from now there are two ways you can do this especially in a daw or recording software of today you can play from the previously played location or you can play from the currently stopped location. So softwares like Reaper have that option. You can hit spacebar to play from the currently pl played point or you can hit return to pause and then play. So there's pause, play and there's stop, play, so to speak. Right Now, in the era of tapes, which I guess is long gone. Some of you may not have even seen a uh, cassette in your life. Maybe you might want to go to a museum and find one, I guess. So in this era, what used to happen is you put the tape in and I'm not that old, so I don't know what the previous era was with, with LPs and your big discs and so on. But ultimately, all music which has ever been recorded was printed and has been printed on some kind of magnetic storage medium. Right. So when the when the cassettes were there, you put it into the cassette player and you rewind and you fast forward. And unless you're at the very beginning, you're not going to know which song of the album itself you're in. You won't know if you're in track this or track that. So it's very crucial to use those rewind and fast forward buttons and speed up the tape and go, go, go to the next part of the song, so to speak. So. What I used to do to learn specific notes, so if I take a, a scale, let's say I'm on the D flat major scale, so five flats, D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, okay, so that's your D flat major scale. If you have some kind of a melody running, let's say, At any given point, you can freeze frame these melodies, which is essentially very equivalent to pausing the tape player or the CD player or even Spotify or YouTube, which you can do right now. And what is that note? Now you know that your root is D flat and you ended your tape on this note. So that ends up being a major second. So maybe it's an, a drill like this. I stopped at the na na either go down to the major seventh or 
na na that's one more way to get to the major seventh to do sani if you want to call major seventh is ni okay so all of this could be with respect to the root of the song to do re re do 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 de do re you could also be with respect to the chord you know da da de da do that's the third with respect to a flat la that's the ninth with respect to e flat isn't it la o that's the five and that's the ninth but that's also the third with respect to the root sa ga so there are different ways you can call out the interval so training the melodic ear you need to know intervals you need to know what is that note and each note you hear is based on the previous thing you heard and going to be based on the next thing that you're going to hear because time flows so melodic ear will be trained first of all the grassroots are intervals and then you divide your intervals to say okay there's this is a consonance this is a dissonance among the consonances you have the rather emotionless consonances namely the perfect fifth the unison same thing octave pretty much the same thing then you have the emotions uh, of the with cons consonances with emotions major third minor third and then you'll have the dissonances the dissonances i tend to divide into three categories the absolute tensions the minor seconds the major sevens and of course our infamous tritone very evil kind of sound as they call it i think it's pretty nice pretty usable anyway then you have the anticipations as i call them which want to lead back to the tenth resolutions uh, the anticipations in music could be considered as the flat 7 very famous wants to go to the sixth then you have the perfect fourth wants to go to the third perfect fourth likes to go to the third or even the minor third samag or samag okay you could have the seconds sare see these anticipations don't feel very tense and dissonant that way you know in a very annoying chaotic way like the attentions uh, as i'm calling them but the anticipations you can be there but it eventually resolves to a resolution which could be a third uh, unison or the octave or the fifth and so on the stable intervals and now the last kind of dissonances if you will would be your sixes now i tend to call the sixes as mysteries because in some contexts they could be pretty stable you know like a major sixth chord in this case but if you think about it you can do sa dha pa and if you propel it with a sa dha pa which is the plagal cadence uh, four going to one or the intervalic uh, relationship on the top would be 6 5 6 5 there we go uh, the minor sixth is also very cool you can do that's your minor 6th la 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 minor 6th kind of feels stable but also feels very eerie very mystical and it also kind of resolves to the fifth okay so that's what you need to do when you freeze the pitch see what the type of interval is with relation to the root or with respect to each other and this tape machine concept is very simple play the song you know let the song play tum pum pum pareri du 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 tum parat du du then it ends there that's a minor 6 to figure out this approach it might help to even follow me on instagram where we do weekly quizzes right so moving forward the next kind of melodic ear training which i recommend for all instrumentalists maybe even vocalists to some extent but more so instrumentalists piano players guitar players violin sax uh, horn whatever it may be 
is now you want to learn your intervals or you want to learn a note and you have a fair idea of the root in this case it's d flat sa and now some music is playing and you heard a note in the song you know la ra ru bu to or le ru la ru or that one now you can play the sa to ru but i am not going to allow you to play that note on the piano just yet you have to sing it first of all to ru this could be a note you heard in a song or an interval or your bandmate played that or you're just having a challenge with yourself really to ru and you just happen to sing this note now you want to detect or guess or plot out what this note is what could it be to ru now one way to do this is to sing the scale up which can be a rather long approach ta ra 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 and you get to your to eventually you should also feel this and say to ru that feels like a major sixth because to ru ru way up high somewhere over the rainbow does that doesn't it way up high so <clears throat> i kind of know it's a major sixth it's not a to ru that would be a minor 6th so major 6th but what is the major 6th now i know i'm pointing that for you on the piano but you should know that on all the 12 keys so this will be a very 3d approach as i call it 3d meaning you're hearing the thing <clears throat> you're singing the thing which is some form of execution because it's also hearing and finally you're playing the thing but in order to play the thing you have to know the thing right so knowing is theory knowing is means in the d flat major scale what is the sixth note well the answer is b flat it's not da it's not b it's not it's not a it's b flat that's your major sixth with respect to d flat d flat's major sixth is b flat and that's how you do it So let's try another case study. I'll stick on D flat. Two, ooh, that's my interval. Ooh, feel stable, but has an emotion, has a rather sad emotion. So we could call this a minor stable. What's minor stable? Minor third. Now what's the minor third of D flat, also known as C sharp? C sharp's minor third is E. Before playing E, sing it. Before you test it out, find the E. Check your answer. It should match with your voice, and your answer is correct. Well done. So that's pretty much the 3D approach towards ear training. Great for anyone. So if you're playing it on a trumpet, you or anywhere you've got a note going, you want to name that interval. it's great on a what you see is what you get instrument like a piano or a saxophone where you have to literally find the note but on a guitar it's more pattern based so maybe you could play the interval on the guitar and then work on singing it and figure out which part of the three dimensions you're not so good at so the 3d approach in a nutshell would be hear the thing ear training know the thing music theory and play the thing that's your technique or your execution we've done a detailed video on the 3d approach to ear training i'd suggest you check it out we link that in the description so moving on to a very historically important or rather the only tool which some of the great classical musicians the jazz musicians of yester year or at least 100 years minimum ago where the ability of recording was not available you didn't have this technology to record it on a storage medium so when was that during the time of well the classical era for a start so what if you just imagine what would mr mozart or beethoven or bach or all these great composers have done back in the day how did they compose a 25 or 30 piece orchestral performance how do they do a string quartet arrangement how do they compose for a choir how do they do those fancy piano sonatas well if you, if i were to go back in time and imagine or put myself in those shoes let's say i was composing something at about 8 pm or 8:30 pm just before my dinner now i'm making a song 
I've kind of played it on the piano, but then I have to make a lot more parts. I have to compose it for a 30-piece orchestra or a choir. So how do I do that? Well, this is where notation came into being. Notation was the only tool classical musicians had because they had ink and uh, a paper and the feather which you write on the paper, isn't it? Back in the day. This feels pretty cool, actually. I may want to watch that Mozart movie again. Amadeus, I think it's called. Pretty cool movie. So if I go back in time, I would imagine someone, you know, with an ink and paper... And that, if you ask me, I would consider that to be the world's first DAW or the world's first recording software because that is how musicians recorded their music. They recorded it on paper and they had to make the notation form as visually appealing to them as possible because they would have had to remember how can even Mozart and Bach were only human. How could they have rec remembered their ideas the next morning. They wake up the next morning and, and, and it's gone. And that can also be very depressing because you know that you c came up with with an, with an so much of art, uh, with, with an amazing piece of art, a masterpiece the previous night. You have deadlines also because the church would have wanted Bach to come up with that piece for the mass. Mozart was pushed by his king, as you know, the, the ruler in that uh, palace. So there's so much of deadlines so much of work needed to be done and so much creativity because these guys were not even allowed to repeat their songs during their gigs you don't have this whole era where oh i like that taylor swift song so i want to hear only that all the time or i'm a fan of smoke on the water that's literally the only thing i want to hear of deep purple that's not how the classical era was they had to make new songs each and every performance or showcase and it had to keep being you know, historically, uh, it had to keep being different and innovative. Which is why those guys wrote so many songs in the first place. Okay, so uh, music notation was born then. And the next morning, if I were to imagine, you know, being in the shoes of a Mozart or a Bach or any of these composers, they would go back to the paper, stare at it, and they have to know how it sounds. So they would need that ability to read notation and sing it back at the bare minimum because playing it on a piano, you can only play one or two parts. But how do you communicate that to your entire orchestra? Your entire orchestra comes for a rehearsal. Time is money, as you know. So how do you figure that out? So even in today's world, the importance of sight singing is very important. If you look at a, a church hymn, a, a four-part harmony, a string quartet, Essentially, you need to learn how to read that and sing it because it's very complex. And in my formative years, I started off as a choir singer, singing in my granddad's and then my mom's choir. So that was how we were brought up in music. We didn't have ear training exercises or apps, which I'm also going to talk about. It was just us in a church with a, with a hymn book and my mom or granddad would say, would tell us during the rehearsal, okay, Jason, you sing the alto, you do the, or someone else does the tenor. And I was very uh, blessed to have done a lot of parts in the choir. Or maybe I was uh, like an annoying kid back then where I was curious to get into everyone's shoes, so to speak. I was always bored with the soprano part. So the alto was a lot of fun. The uh, When my voice changed uh, by the age of 11 or 12, I, I would then do tenor. Then I went to bass. Then I came back to alto because we didn't have altos. So it was really cool to be able to do all the parts. And I feel those those occasions helped build up not only my harmonic ear but most definitely my melodic ear and I could recognize pitches because in the book we are act literally reading D and singing D you know so how do we learn color perfectly how do we say that is orange that is pink that is blue someone tells us that some teacher would come to us and say okay boss that is blue keep repeating that and they show you different things which uh, signify the color blue we don't really have that in our music education system as kids growing up right so luckily for me there were there were people in my life who kept saying you know sing an f 
uh, sing a B flat. So in a sense, you get that perfect pitch, as we call it, which I still don't believe I have, but I kind of have it because I'm involved with these notes. So if ever you want to build perfect pitch, you need to call these notes by their name. So F sharp, F, F, E, B flat, and so on, C, C, and so on. That's You need to be involved with the notes by their name. You can't just play them and not call them something. You have to call them and then you get that perfect pitch. So I would imagine that all these composers back then had that perfect pitch or at least the, the relative pitch, which is ability to find it with respect to the root of the song. So I'll just give you a few scenarios and we have a few things notated for you where you can practice some sight singing. So in this exercise you see here, first let's get the root. That seems to be the root. And the first line seems to be just going up the minor scale. So... That's your natural minor. Then there's some playing around in line two, so to speak. That's bar one of the line one, which is C, E flat, E, F. You can even sing the note names. G, F, G. Test it out bar by bar. That's a good approach. E flat, G, F, G. E flat, F, G. Then E flat, D, G. Then E flat, B flat, E flat, G, F, G, E flat, D, C, G, C. G, F, E. Don't play the piano while you sing. That's cheating. You have to sing it and then check. Like the 3D thing which I showed you earlier. G, F, E flat, D, C, F, C, E flat, F, G, E flat, B flat, E flat, B flat, C, B flat, D, C, F, C, F, C, minim, bit slow. E flat, B flat, E flat, G, E flat, G, F, G, E flat, bum. That's a nice one there. F, G, E flat, D, C, two. C B flat A flat B flat C B flat D C B flat G E flat C D E flat F G B flat A flat B flat C B flat C close. Okay, so that's one way you can practice some sight singing exercises. And another way is to do it with if you follow church hymn music, you can follow a hymn book. I'm just gonna walk you through a great church hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus name. So the melody goes, it's on B flat, as you can see, two flats, right? Boom, 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 boom. So two flats. All hail. That's the top line. To hail the pa, pa. That's a quick one with a dotted uh, quaver. Pa of Jesus' name. Ta, ta, ta. Pa, 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 pa. It's a three by four. I should have mentioned that. Ta, di, tu, do, di. And then we can do the the the, the bass line. All hail the power of Jesus name. Do, 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 do. Like the bass line is beautiful. Run, crown him, crown him. I kind of remember that from it's on. Crown, crown him and crown him Lord of all. So your SATB as they call it, soprano being the main melody, alto being under that, tenor being under that, usually what the male vocals would sing. Uh, I would consider myself more of a tenor. And then you have the bass. Doo -doo -doo -doo, in the lower register regions. Right? So you can build a choir out of any group of people. It's a lot of fun singing in a choir. You should try it. So sight singing in a nutshell is the tool which probably made notation as we know it. And notation made music happen as we know it. Because it was the only medium to communicate ideas amongst fellow musicians. It was the only way for a individual musician to remember his or her works or compositions and 
it was the only way to pass one's legacy down to the next person how do we have ever known the compositions of these greats from the past if they had not notated it or i am guessing their students notated it because teaching music was a very common thing back then still is but it was very common back then almost all the composers would teach or they would still be learning okay moving forward this is something which really works for me to train the ear and it's worked for a lot of my students if i give you a small fragment of a tune let's say if i do okay i'm on d flat so if i give you this fragment and tell you just ascend and climb and continue diatonically and see how it goes so that's 1 2 3 of the scale then it goes that's 2 3 4 and try to predict as it goes forward ascending da 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 re ga ma now ga ma pa test your answer ma pa dha test your answer pa dha ni test your answer dha ni sa and continue ni sa re Seven, one, two, sa re ga, sa re ga. There we go. Now, once you've got this predictive movement, you know, uh, maybe da 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 da. Try la da da da. What I like to do is da 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 da, and then I like to just hold down the chords, the diatonic chords, play the two chord la da da da, la da da da, F minor, la da di do. Now that you've gone ascending, figure out a way to also go descending. With so, la da 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 will become la da da da. So, la da da da, la da da da, la da da di, la da da do, la da da da, la da da da, la da da do. can also jumble that up maybe la ra 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 ri ra ru 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 becomes very melodic in nature you can improvise like that any time you play the one chord la ra 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 go to the four chord la ra ri ri five chord la ra 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 six la ra ri ru la ra ri ra 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 maybe some opposites or jumbles of each other like la ra 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 la ra 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 la ra ra ri la ra 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 ru ru la ra ra ri ra 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 ru 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 ri ru ri so these are what we call melodic patterns and it's important for you to sing as you play these particular ideas okay so practice your melodic phrases a phrase could be related with the chord it could just be a scale going up and down or a scale going in some kind of an interval and don't limit yourself to just the major scale it could so easily be the maybe the harmonic minor so la ra 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 re re la ra re ra ru ra ru ru la ra 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 la ra 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 la ra da ra la ra re ra ra that's the na 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 Harmonic minor is another nice scale to practice because of that jump between the uh, sixth degree, which is a flat six, and the natural raised seven. Okay, and last but not least, we have a bunch of apps out there. As you know, it's 2024. There has to be some technology to help us train our ear. I'd like to point out that the apps are not to make your life easier. the apps sometimes can you know guide you or they they may give you the right answer you have apps which can literally tell you the names of the chords as you import the song into it you know there's no end to where this is going to go it, you can isolate the vocals and this is great i love technology i love the fact that the audio quality nowadays when you slow things down no longer gets degraded by a noticeable amount you can change the pitch you can change 
any aspect of the song you can individually listen to each element i love all that but when it comes to ear training you need to you need to do it organically and you need to work at it so an app which perhaps gives you these quizzes or tests may be very helpful you can get any kind of mobile ear training app a lot of them are free uh, the one i'm using because i'm more of a browser person is the beato ear training app which has a lot of options a lot of things to practice not just intervals there's also some harmonic stuff there's rhythmic stuff so let me walk you through a few kinds of things first of all when you're listening to an interval using the app it's going to give you a bunch of random examples the key will change the root may change and the interval could be given to you either harmonically or melodically and when it's melodic it would be ascending melodic or descending melodic so harmonically is just one because it's together ascending melodic descending melodic let's look at a few examples with this app so that's la da that seems to be going down right so it's a descending interval and it appears to be a, a very close one it's almost the closest it can possibly get so la da if it was wider la da la da da so la da it's probably a minor second going down let's look at the answers hmm there is a flat 2 let me tick it i hope i get this right Yes, I've got it right. Okay. Da de da de. That's a tricky one. Ne da de da. It feels a bit unstable. Let's play that again. Let's listen to that once more. There's a refresh button. Da de da do 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 do. Now this feels like an anticipation. It feels unstable. So I'm going to go with definitely no fifth no uh, but then the question is is it a fourth or a or a major second because a fourth is also an anticipation it doesn't feel like a fourth doesn't feel like a second feels like a very wide interval so what's a anticipation but not a tension which is a wide interval that would be a minor seventh i think let's look at a da da you could also flip that around and go la do You could also sing a chord. Do 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 do. If you are aware of the dominant seventh chord, it's a very famous chord. Do 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 do. So far, we've got this right. Flat seven. Let's wait for it. Yes. So similarly, you can train your harmonic here. Do do. Seems to be do do. First, try to capture the two notes melodically when you hear it harmonically, which is tricky. So. uh you should figure out the lower one and the higher one right so the lower one seems to be this and the higher one seems to be that so quite a stretch so let's look at an interval if we got to to maybe sing a familiar interval like a fifth to do that's a fifth twinkle twinkle and then now you hear this it's a bit higher isn't it so to do do what's the um, immediate jump after a perfect fifth you could argue major sixth it's not to do that's a minor six it's a major six let's hope we got that right there is major sixth in here or oh, just says six so i'm going to try let's hope this answer is right nice i think it gave me a a green sign so it means it's going to the next answer so i looks like i'm right i'm in some kind of practice mode so uh, i guess when you start the test the same things happen and it it grades you so you can do a test out of 10 which is a good gamification of the process let's do one more harmonic test and then conclude la da i think lu ru so the first note is that the second note is that so La da would be a familiar perfect fifth, and to do would be a fifth plus one. So you could either say augmented fifth, which is a flat five, which is a sharp five. Sorry, I don't seem to have a sharp five in here. They've named it as a flat six. So I'm going to go with a flat six, and let's see how it goes. Let's hope we are right. Yes, Lisa.
I hope that's a yes because I got a green color. Green generally means right and uh, uh, red usually means wrong. So far we are, uh, let's test this out actually and get a red one. I'm going to choose a seven. Yes, I'm wrong. So then it should be a, perf a flat seven and I'm right there. Great. So the app works. So it's going on and on. So enough of our study right now. So I hope you've got the five ways in which the year can be tested. First of all, you can freeze the pitch, the old school cassette player mode, pause, listen or stop and play from your uh, originally played location and see what the pitch is, what the chord is what the beat structure is or maybe a cluster, a small cluster of uh, three to four notes could be figured out. Then the 3D approach where as a musician you have to hear the thing, you have to know the thing and only then you should play the thing. <clears throat> okay, Sight singing, very important, very historically important. That's why we have notation in the first place. So I think um, learn sight singing which is the ability to see the thing and sing the thing. Sing what you are reading in the sheet paper. Okay. Uh, patterns, recognize a certain pattern and develop that across the scale. Increment it up or down. Uh, <clears throat> figure out the opposites of the pattern. Jumble it around. And last but not least, you can use apps like the Beato Ear Training app that I showed you to practice it on the go. Maybe you're in the flight or you're, you just have some time to spend and you have a pair of earphones at your disposal. So it's a nice opportunity to train your ear wherever you are really on, on this earth. And that's the power of technology. Also, alongside this technology, even when you're listening to songs, use apps which can slow down the song, which can change the pitch, which can, you know, brainstorm the song and allow you to dive into the concept a lot more. Right, guys? Thanks a ton for watching the video. And if you like the lesson, don't forget to hit that like button. Leave us a comment with maybe other approaches or other topics that might be challenging you don't forget to share the video with your fellow musician friends and if you haven't already there's a subscribe button and a bell with regular notifications try to ring that bell it's a lot of fun you i hope youtube gives a noise when you ring the bell they don't at the moment it'll be cool to do that so ring the bell and cheers catch you in the next one